Welcome to some random notes so from Festival of the Unexceptional, where uh, Kitch is trying to kill a wasp okay. as he updates the mileage. I love animals. On the Picasso, yes. yes. Official. We've entirely rubbed away 512. It's gone. Oh, there goes Matt. Bye, Matt. He's in a hurry. There we go. He's just, just doing a little drive-by tour, Matt in his punto. Oh, God. That looks cool. I kind of missed that then. Can you do it again? Why are you colouring it in? None of the other letters are colouring. Because I'm making it unique. Oh, OK. Does that look worse? That looks terrible, mate. It's really bad. I've never actually met Scott. Yeah, I know. I'd, I'd, let me just... You, you're just in time to see his awful attempts at colouring it. I mean, I know it's your birthday. Did you know it's Kitty's 40th birthday? I know. Someone's saying happy birthday. No, not again. <laughs> I didn't get it the first time. Let's be, it's a work of art. But yes, the Picasso. Am I allowed to show them the welding? Um, when are they going to see it? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. No, I think they're better safe with us. It's worth looking out for. It's an experience. So a bit of bonus footage at the end of the show. The Mighty Dacher is unwell. It's having a few charging issues. So I think we're going to use a Vauxhall Corsa to try and encourage it to live. Someone knows you got to it. I we haven't got a connection somewhere. It's not quite connected, is it? Our attempts to get the mighty Dasha started are in vain. There she is, struggling down the hill. Uh, we pushed her down there, and suddenly she still doesn't work. So there goes the Suzuki Baleno full of absolute winners, and uh, Rich has walked back to the house to try and get a breakdown. Unfortunate news, and we're gonna drive home in the Vauxhall Corsa. It has been an extraordinary day, but yeah, we are completely done in now. Uh, the uh, Corsa has met a German friend, so that was good. Uh, there was a Corsa in the concourse, it's been amazing. So uh, that is end of show. And uh, I guess we might do some filming of taking the Corsa back home again, but that's tomorrow. Ooh, wind. Uh, we are now going home, or back to our hotel, for some mild collapse. Well, I'm replaced. Uh, the... We're pleased. Yeah, this is the state we're in after mm -hmm. Festival of the Exceptional. We're tacking this onto our little vloggy bit of random happenings at the show. But yeah, we're, we're back down in um, Sussex again after a, a rather lengthy drive. We've covered 428 miles since we began filming the course at the um, petrol station at Sainsbury's or the supermarket, even. Mm -hmm. I believe they're called um, the Sainsbury's store. Uh, a few of you did correctly identify that as Portslade. You are scary people. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that's where we started filming, and we've done 428 miles since. And uh, according to my sums, this little car has done 50 mpg. We have taken it very steady today. On the way up there, the traffic was absolutely awful, no. and when it wasn't awful, I was doing 70. Today we've been cruising 60, no, the 65. the traffic just was awful, though, wasn't it? Yeah, we've had a lovely <laughs> run back down, really. Yeah, the run back down has been great, yeah, which yeah. is a relief. So we're going to go and collapse in a heap now. We've got the video going live at 3 o'clock this afternoon. What, the first very exceptional one? Yeah. I thought it was like sit on it a couple of days and then... No, no, I'll get this straight out. Nice. We've, we've got the exciting one, the, the lingo one. That, yeah, that's and, what's waiting. And worse than this, right? Yeah. There's a partner video to that one. Not Blingo and partner, as in a twin video to it. Yeah. Because we filmed two and we, we don't know what's happened different aspects. Now, the person that filmed the twin video 
we gave him the juicy tidbit of information that was the identity of this car before anybody else knew. Yeah, we gave him. And we thought in exchange for that, we would get the heads up on what happened in his twin video. And we haven't. He hasn't told and us anything. Didn't. No, so we're not. And really I spoke to him that. yesterday, and he said, "Oh, I didn't know it was a deal." Yeah. It was a deal, mate. After I sang happy birthday on the stage for him yesterday. Oh. Anyway, yeah, it was a, a, a cracking event. We are utterly um, exhausted. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I don't have to drive. Oh, no, we've got to drive back to Wales tomorrow. But before then, let's take advantage of being in civilization with takeaways. That's a good idea. They have actual takeaway food delivery here. <laughs> but we don't understand such novelties. But a little bit about the Corsa. Um, it, it's done us very proud. It's, it's done very well. Uh, uh, being an car, it, it is... Um, pretty good I, I find the driving position a little uncomfortable my knee hurts a little but that's so often true of any car and the seats a bit firm because I think some of the padding has fallen out of this see one. the thing is I think that's an unfair what's it because yours is obviously quite worn compared to yeah, mine, yeah, mine yeah. is ever so yeah, comfy yeah I'm quite envious yeah. one day we'll be able to swap positions yeah mm. But yeah, I mean, the steering's nice, even though it's not power steering. I, mean, I saw people in the comments saying, oh, I drove one that was horribly heavy. Um, there's been no, I don't know what the front tyre pressures are at, but there's been no stage I thought this was horribly heavy. She's done really well, really, hasn't Quite she? a bit of heft if you're getting out of a parking space, but other than mm. that, you barely even notice it's not, not too much steering. road noise. No, no, pretty quiet at speed. Quiet, it was some, yeah. Not on the concrete, Six the M25, nine, obviously, it was horrendous yeah, well, on that. Everything is on there. Everything is. But, um, you know, she... Um, no road noise, mm. very comfortable. I will say, it isn't an exciting car to drive at all. The engine is not exciting. she will She doesn't struggle if there's a hill Yeah, that, that's not exciting. She does. The, the Panda does not. This replaced the Panda I drove, was that a couple of years ago now? So, In a previous video. Yeah. Ping. My father-in-law <laughs> to be has replaced a Fiat Panda with a Vauxhall Corsa that's much older. Mm. Brilliant. That's, that's great stuff. But yeah, it's not an exciting car to drive at all. The Peugeot 106 begged to be thrashed, and uh, thrashed it got. Spanked was the term. Spanked, idea. yes, it, it did get a mighty spanking. Uh, but uh, this, you don't want to spank this. It, it doesn't handle well enough. It doesn't encourage you to. It just gets down the road. You know, it, it just gets on and does its business with the minimum of hassle. Spank pandas, not courses. Yes, there you go. <laughs> pandas or 106s. Okay. Little pugs. You can spank a little pug. And a panda. Yeah. But not, not, a, not a griffin. Not, 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 not a griffin, a griffin on this? Oh, and a quick hello <gasps> to all the Australians. This is a Corsa. Yes. Who reminded me that... Uh, she's now looking for the shark. Uh, they reminded me that, of course, the um, Vauxhall Corsa, Opal Corsa, Chevrolet Corsa in South America. I got that slightly wrong in the previous video. Um, yeah, it could, could be any of those it could also be a holden barina in new zealand and australia i understand they were hopeless over there really struggling with the heat the electrics just fell apart uh, i think they had homebrew air conditioning retrofitted down there which didn't work very well but uh yes the holden barina that is one of many cars to have worn that badge including Deus and suzuki's over the years you've had a shark yet no oh no i know in one model oh no this is from 2006 onwards I think this is too early for the shark. Sadness. Yes, there you go. If you know what we're on about, fair play. If you don't, don't worry. <laughs> Not important in the big scheme of things. But yeah, 50 mpg. I better reset the trip. Just so, um, in case your dad wants to um, reset the fuel. It did say it on there. But uh, we're going to wrap this one up and go and collapse and listen to the cricket. And eat dessert. And eat dessert. Bye. If you'd like to introduce yourselves, uh, for people that may not know who you are, Steph, if you'd like to start. Hello, I'm Steph and I'm from iDriver Classic. Woo! Hello, I'm Matt and I'm from Furious Driving. Woohoo! And I'm Ian, I'm from Hognot. Yay! Round of applause, round of applause, blah, blah, blah. thank you very much. Hey, what a good start. There you go. Top-notch influences. So... For people that may not know who you are, I'd like you to just kind of explain what you do, what kind of stuff you post on your channel, what edge you have um, and offer your followers that other people don't. If I had to sum it up quite succinctly, I Drive a Classic is essentially a woman wearing your grandmother's clothes, wearing your granddad's car. <laughs> nice. Wearing? Driving, <laughs> driving. Well, Furious Driving is a mix of car reviews of cars you probably remember but didn't aspire to when they were new and a lot more 
I don't know, optimism than talent whilst trying to fix them. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, and you well do the well, <laughs> yes. Uh, Hubnut, the, the overall theme is celebrating the average, which is why this event is just, it just gets me so excited because it's all the cars of yesteryear that are generally forgotten. And the, the channel's all about celebrating that with a bit of ham-fisted mechanicking along the way. I just noticed, Matt, you just got very excited and pointed at something. What did you spot? A baby blue Rover 75, just like that. <laughs> if you are the owner of the baby blue Rover 75, I think you've got a fan. So, uh, yeah, hopefully they can hear you. Um, well, I have one very similar at home, which I debated bringing, but I thought it was too exceptional to, to bring. Oh, so you've got a kindred spirit out there. Your friend. So, is there something about you um, and your channels that you think has kind of brought something new to the car scene? Like, how have you kind of shaken things up? Because there's, you know, a lot of people make YouTube videos, but you guys have earned a position on the Festival of the Unexceptional stage today because you're exceptionally good at what you do. So, what gives you that edge? Uh, I, I think it's almost by accident, really. I, I started Hubner primarily because I, I used to work in the classic car media, and you always had to write about certain cars. And it's just oh, like, well, I want to yeah. write about these oddball ones. And so Hubnut began as a way of me having that freedom to talk about what I wanted to talk about. And I love the fact that I can put a video out about something wonderfully obscure and you know, really quite dull. And people lap it up. And that's great to find my audience has the same sort of views. It's, uh, the best thing about YouTube is you can drive down into your niche and you will find your audience and that's been an unexpected bonus of it, a real joy. When you set out to do your YouTube channel, did you have any idea, you know, when you did that first video, was there an intention with it or did you just give oh, it no, a go? Not at all. O oddly, I started with a Nissan Leaf. It was my first time driving an electric car. I wanted to record the experience and then I just started recording what I was getting up to with my own cars and it just built up. From there, there was never any point I thought it might one day be a career, and somehow it has become one. But yeah, it, it, you just don't know how it's going to pan out. But the key thing is just to keep pumping the videos out and do it because you love doing it. How about you, Matt? Very similar to Ian, actually. I used to work in the classic, well, still do work in the classic car media. But well, we used to work together brilliant. sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, pitching cars to editors is always a, a real faff, and a, a, I found a car I really like send it to an editor, will they like it, then they make a decision and they might say no because the advertisers won't like it. Much the same as Ian, I can then go, well, I found a Hustler, which is a weird mini-based thing made of wood. No magazine's gonna run it, apart from once every 10 years. I've done three of them now, and every time people have gone crazy for it because you just don't see it anywhere else. And I love this ability to go, much the same as Ian, find a niche, drill down into the niche. You know, I love old Rovers, I love Italian cars. I can go and mess around with these things to my heart's content and people will come along for the ride. And um, when I'm working on cars, I'm by no means an expert. Most of my car knowledge comes from watching my dad in the driveway or photographing technical features for magazines where experts have shown the writer how to do a job and I've taken photos. And I've kind of learned from that. Now I'll go and do a job in my car, I'll get through, I'll get stuck. And then I'll get a dozen comments from people saying, well, actually, I've had one of those cars. What you need to do there is, is this, and I can move on with my project because the internet has told me how, which is fantastic. It's having a real sort of, friendly hug of support to say okay don't give up you can keep going with this and 